I'm Owen from The Brick Worlds, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can get your robot to drive completely straight using a program that we invented called LADS. So first, I'm going to be explaining the ideas behind lags and how we apply them to our robot game. And then I'm going to be talking about how the actual code that we wrote works. And then our coach, Francis, is going to talk a little bit about what the process was like behind inventing lags. So the basic idea behind lags or line assisted gyro steering is that it combines a gyro steering program with a proportional line follower. I'm not going to be going fully into how those work, but I've linked really great videos for both by BuilderDude35 in the description. But in short, gyro steering works by taking the current gyroscope angle and subtracting it from the angle that you want the robot to drive at and then putting that result into a steering block. Line following is very similar, except you're taking the current light intensity value instead of angle and then subtracting it from a target value and then putting that result into a steering block. Both of these programs work very well, however, we found that there is a major flaw in each of them. Gyro steering starts to drift off over longer distances because the sensor values start to become inaccurate and line following drives the robot in a zigzag so you can never know exactly where the robot will be or what angle it will be at at any particular point in time. So we invented lags when we we realize that these two problems completely cancel each other out. The base program of gyro steering that it is built around keeps the robot driving very predictably and steadily, and then the input of the line follower ensures that the robot is staying exactly on course over the line no matter how long it's driving for. Lags also outputs the integral of the drift and sensor values that it detects from the gyroscope. This means that if lags detected that the line follower had to constantly correct the gyro to the left in order to keep it on track, it outputs that data and the rest of the program program automatically uses it to correct the gyro later on. Lags has also influenced our mission strategy a ton because, well, there's no better way to say it than any run that we added lags to just started working. For example, White Run couldn't reliably get over to the east side of the board without hitting the swing, and since we've added lags, it hasn't failed in over four months. Blue Run kept on either hitting the elevator or safety factor on its way over to steel construction, so instead of driving straight there like we were before, we jump between the lines using lags. And because of that, we raised steel construction all 18 of the times that we tried it between our regional competition and our state championship. We call this strategy of jumping between lines, lags, expressways, and we use them all over our code. So now for the actual programming behind it. As I said, the basic idea behind this program is that it takes a line follower and uses it to modify the target angle of a gyro steering program. So here's the line follower. Like a standard proportional line follower, it subtracts the light intensity value that the sensor is seeing from a target value, 75 in this case, that the robot would be seeing if it were on a specific portion of the line. In a normal line follower, we would put the output here straight into a steering block, which would steer the robot closer to the black part of the line if it was reading too light of a value and vice versa. However, instead of putting its result into a steering block, we're going to put it into a gyro steering program, but first we're going to multiply it by a very small number. We do this to make sure that the line follower doesn't have too much influence over the steering of the robot, because if it did, we would be back to that zigzagging problem that we were trying to fix. We have found that 0.05 or negative 0.05, depending on which side of the line you're following, is the best sweet spot, where the robot will stay perfectly on the line, but always in a predictable position. Then it adds this value to the target angle of the gyro steering program, which we have set at 20 degrees right now. This my block is just a standard gyro steering program as you can see here. And these three parameters are just the angle, the gain, and the speed. The idea behind adding this output to the target angle is that when the robot is drifting too far off the line, it means that the angle from the gyro is a few degrees off, and the input of the line follower changes that target angle to account for it. For example, with just a regular gyro steering program, if the gyro started to drift, the robot would still think it's going perfectly straight since the gyroscope is still reading 20 degrees. But with flags, it automatically subtracts or adds a few degrees to the target angle depending on where the robot is in relation to the line. This ensures that the robot stays driving perfectly straight. So then the end condition for the loop is just after a certain amount of rotations have been completed and this my block just outputs the current average rotation count from the two motors and then once that is greater than this set value in this case two the loop will end so here is our lags my block we have the target light intensity parameter which plugs in right here which dictates how far left or right the robot is going to follow the line on and then we have the line following multiplier 
which plugs in here, which dictates how much the line follower influences the target angle of the gyro steering program. Then we have the target angle, which plugs in here, and then the gain and the power, which both go directly into the gyro steering program. Lastly is the rotations, which plugs in right at the end here, and then the port number, which plugs in here, and it just tells the robot which sensor to use for the line follower. Then finally we have the integral function. While the MyBlock is running, it records all of the deviations from the line and then adds them together into this one variable as you can see here. So it's just taking the variable and then adding the correction that the line follower needed to make to it and then putting it back into the variable every time it goes through the loop. Then at the very end of the program, it divides the integral by the amount of times the measurements were made, which is just the loop count, and then it exports that here, which comes out right here in the MyBlock. We can then use that value to modify the target angle of later gyro steering programs where we aren't able to follow a line. So effectively, LAGS is not only correcting the robot while it is running, but based on the data that it collects on the gyro error, it is correcting the robot for the entire rest of the program. So after Andover, the kids realized that they sort of were having a problem, that the robot was not crossing along the south wall as straight as it really needed to. Um, and even small uh, differences, being off by a little bit, meant that they were out of position to do things like the swing and, um, and all the other elements on the other side of the board. So um, Owen and I were here late. He was working on, uh, you know, trying to fix those problems, trying to, you know, retune this, retune that. Um, and had been for a while, and then suddenly he just looked at me uh, and said, I know how to make the robot go straight. And at first I didn't even quite know what he was talking about, and he says, yeah, no, I, I know how to fix it. So he goes off to the computer, writes a piece of code, um, takes a little while, I, looks like he's doing something complicated. I see lots of um, data wires going all over the place in the uh, EV3G code. And then he comes back, loads it onto the robot, and drives it across the um, board completely straight. Now, sometimes it looks like it's going straight, but he, you know, this time he was like, that's it, we fixed it. And it was really beautiful because it was a moment of complete insight. He had been struggling, and other kids have been struggling with um, like trying to use uh, line following or gyro steering. But gyro steering seemed to be the best, but sometimes there was a slight arc to the gyro. And what he had done is realized basically in one moment after hours of struggling or even days of struggling with it, that you could combine the two approaches and make one approach and it would work perfectly every time. And a few days later, he and Colin were working together and they realized that they could take one of the ideas they had learned that summer um, from PID line following, the idea of the integral. They could actually get the accumulated error um, out of, they could measure that. Uh, and find the average and use that to correct for um, drift at other parts of the run. Uh, so it was really neat to see them put together so many different advanced concepts. Um, after, after Owen wrote LAGS, this light assisted gyro uh, program, our scores went from, um, I think we, our high score at Andover was 385 points, which was really good, but not nearly as high as we had hoped. Um, and then after that, uh, all of these elements of these runs where everything was slightly unreliable just became super reliable. And um, I don't think we scored under like 500 points for the rest of the season, uh, which was pretty amazing. Maybe that's, yeah. And um, so it was a giant addition to the, to the a robot game for, for the team.